they're all C2 change tube families. This is my applying program. We are continue prospecting part two session. When you watch this video, please take a note. Have a good time. Hello everyone. This is my upline. Today I'm excited to start this Let You program, especially for network marketers. I know network marketers all over the world, they do their best. My upline after a couple of months, she told me, uh, I told her that, okay, I'm doing 10 prospecting per day, so as you have told me. Then she said, okay, do you think that will really uh, help you to succeed? Do you think that's a big number? And I said, yeah, of course, you told me and I'm doing it. Then she said, no, 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 I told you like that because uh, you need to somehow start, okay? Your business is going, but you need to fly. So what do I need to do? She said, no, you need to do now 30 prospecting per day. Then I said, okay, yes, I will do that. Then I started to do um, 30, 40, 50 prospecting per day. And then I keep on doing that for a couple of uh, weeks and months. And then I, I, I told her that I'm doing this. Then she said, now, do you think that is the, the maximum capacity that you can do? Mm -hmm. Then trust me, what happened is I, I became angry with my upline. Then I said, okay, when will she ever stop telling me to do more? So then I said, okay, let me try. Okay. So I went back and I prepared 10,000 business cards, not a card, uh, 10,000 business uh, papers because I couldn't afford for a business card at that time. So, and then I took for one day, I took 500. So I started to, to do that. So in one month, I, I finished that 10,000. So every month I prospected 10,000 people, sometimes as high as 600 per day. So was it a hard uh, work? Yes, it was. And is it worth it? Yes. You know what I love after doing so many prospecting and people keep on, keep on calling you, send you new message, etc. And then I return back then, you know, you will be in, in the activity. You will be busy responding to your prospects that feels good and of course you need to do the job which is business presentation uh, i mean invitation presentation and proper follow-up i did my due diligence and every day i pre uh, i give business presentation which we will cover some other time every day i give business presentation at uh, 10 a.m in the morning and i also give business presentation uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon every week or during weekdays, I mean weekends. Weekends in the afternoon, weekdays in the morning. So I did this one Monday through Monday continuously for two years. And then after that, my downline start to take over. They, they duplicate this in, in different parts of the country and they did it. So some of them, they take it online and they start to give online. Then I, I can say I literally retired from prospecting so i don't need to prospect now these days only whenever i i start again as a business when i start again when my business collapses and then start again then i go for prospecting so you do prospecting not too much i i massively do prospecting maximum for six months after that i have enough number of downlines i have enough number of presenters i have enough number of uh, people to talk and chat to in order to recruit to my business so then it takes from there so it is up to you to decide to succeed in this business and network marketing is is very simple anybody who wants to do it you can do it wherever you are you can use your smartphone and uh, you can use your phone you can do it at home you can do it online physical you know this business is amazing you sit at your country and you don't need to travel abroad but you can do this business and earn money wherever you are somebody can uh, use the product abroad and you you make money at hometown so that is a perfect business especially for those people who does not have much capital in order to start a new business so 
uh, when we talk about prospecting, it's searching for the need of people, as I told you, to consume your product and also to benefit from the opportunity that uh, you offer. As network marketing is recruiting and retention, and without recruitment, there is no retention. And recruiting starts from prospecting. The, the more number of pro, uh, recruitment or prospecting that you do every day continuously, then the more number of uh, people will be joining your business, which makes it easier for you to succeed in your first year in network marketing. Now, let's see five magic questions in uh, prospecting. Because so many people, um, they they get lost especially uh, networkers beginning networkers they don't know what to say how to say to people they try to chat online and you know normally the prospect says whatever they want and then the network marketer is taken towards the topic the, the prospect is talking so that will be a waste of time so whenever you are chatting online and whenever you are discussing physically with your prospect in between your discussions, you can ask these magic questions in order to shift the discussion to, uh, toward this, your direction, which is trying to understand the needs and wants of your customers. Now, you need to establish a value-based practice for your clients and pros prospects. Whenever you chat, sometimes, especially, I see in my downlines, uh, whenever ladies are chatting with a man, then you know the discussion goes somewhere else and they will be wasting their time. They will be chatting for two hours, an hour, and then they say that I'm doing prospecting. This is something else, it's not prospecting. So you don't, you don't need to waste your time on prospecting, uh, chatting, chit-chatting about other topics which is irrelevant to your business. So you need to redirect the discussion towards where you want by asking questions in between your dis discussions. So it is more important that values understood before anything is valued. Before you value uh, your prospect, you need to understand their values. What values do they have? And in order to know, you need to ask five magic questions. Magic question number one. Why do you get out of bed every morning? You know, so many people, they get out of bed early morning, number one, to go to school, number two, to go to work, or, you know, to do this or that. They, they don't have such questions in the past. So when you ask a person, why do you get out of bed every morning? Is it to go to work? If they say to go to work, then to go to work is very simple reason. But why do you go to work? You need to ask them. If somebody says to go to school, then you need to ask, why do you go to school? Because when you keep on asking this question, number one, you will be trying to understand their values. What do they value most? Uh, somebody may say, I go to work because I need to feed my family. Okay, why do you need to feed your family? Because I love my family. Why do you love them? Because they are my gifts, you know? So you will see that the person is talking about his value. That means this person values his parents, I mean, his family members. Somebody may say, why do you go to school to, um, why do you get out of bed every morning? The person may say, because I, I, I need to go to school. Then why do you go to school? I need to build my future. Why do you need to build your future? Because I need to achieve, maybe I need to open or have a huge organization. Why do you need to have a huge organization? Because I need to give a lot of job opportunity for people. Okay, so you know, this person values giving a job opportunity for people. So you can ask them, okay, now this is the value that the person has. You will be talking about the value. So do you really want to give a lot of opportunity or job opportunity for people? The person may say, yes, I want, yeah, great. Okay, if you can give uh, 1,000 people job opportunity, now will you be happy? Yes, finish. So, you know, then I have an opportunity if you have a look at it and you like it, then it will allow you to give job opportunity for so many people. Now, you can go to school and also give the opportunity now. By the time you finish the, the school, you can also give 1,000 people this opportunity. So it will be easier for you to influence. Magic question number two, who is the most important person in your life? 
or in the world. Now, who is the most important person in the world? When people are asked this question, they go to their mind and try to look for who, who, who. And guess what? Some people, they tell you about their spiritual leaders. Some of them, they will tell you about the famous people that they admire most. Some people, they will tell you about their parents or brothers and sisters, etc. So anyhow, whosoever they admire, uh, there they have their values okay so you can know more about the person uh, value so when they tell you uh, okay i admire mr x or i admire mrs y then you keep on asking again why why do you admire him or her then they will tell you the reasons behind the admire so uh, number one they may say because i love them number two they say uh, because uh, he gives me a lot of support or uh, he inspires me or because he does this and that etc so you know when you ask them why continuously you will start to understand the basic the basic value of that person and take note you need to record because in, in network marketing while doing prospecting you will be talking to so many people you need to take notes you need to write the, the name of the person where you have talked to that person and what kind of values this person has why because next time when you reconnect with that person when you invite that person for business presentation when you invite that person for your product presentation then you will be using these values that the person told you for example if you need to invite one of your prospects for your business presentation or product presentation you will call them and say you say like this hi how are you last time you have told me that you admire mrs x or mr y because he helps a lot of people or because he helped you a lot then when uh, because of that i would like you to be uh, to get the opportunity to help so many people okay you will say that and the person will be inspired why? Because it is his value or her value to help people, to support people. This is very important. This is magic question number two. Then magic question number three is what is the most important to you in the world? Okay. In a state of people now, uh, that instead of directing on people, then it is very wide question. What is most important to you in the world? Some people may say my country, some people may say my mom, some people may tell you my profession, some people they will tell you my life, some people they will say my brother, etc. They will tell you what is the most important thing in their life. Remember, this is their value. So they, th that means they give higher value for whatever answer they give to you so you need to take that down and if somebody says my mom is the the, the most important uh, to me in this world then uh, whenever you invite you need to focus okay you need to focus how the product can uh, benefit this person to add value to uh, his mom uh, or you need to focus during presentation how the person needs to join you or buy this product and use the, the, the marketing plan in order to uh, support his, his mom. So it is absolutely important that you address uh, people's value, needs and wants in order to influence them. This, this is uh, uh, magic question number three. Magic question number four is what do you want to achieve before you leave this world? You know, we are all here temporarily, okay? So you can tell the person, let's say that you lived 200 years, even though he knows that or she knows that they will not be living for 200 years. Don't say that, to, uh, uh, let's say you live for 10 years, people will be very unhappy with you. So give them a lot of uh, lifetime in this planet and say that, let's say that you lived for 200 years and then when you leave this place, what would you have achieved before you leave? So people will say before I leave that they will be talking about the major things that they really value. Some people will say that, oh, I want to uh, be a very religious person. Some people will tell you, I want to achieve this and that. I need to have this company. I need to build a huge organization. I need to support 1000 uh, needy, etc. They will tell you uh, and they will share with you their values what 
they really value. So then you will ask them, why do you say that? They will give you an answer. Again, you keep on asking, why do you say that? Why do you want that? Why do you want this? Then they will be talking about it in detail. You know, finally, what happens is they sometimes they may even cry because of the value, the deep emotion that they have in there. Then you write the name of the person in the values that they have. Why? When you invite, you're going to talk about that value. When you give presentation, you're going to talk about that value. When you follow even after presentation, if they reject, you know, they show you different attitudes. So you, you are going to use this um, need, this want and this value of the person. The last magic question, magic question number five is what do you really love about your life? So now you, you bring it into uh, their life. What do you really love about your life? Number one, so many people, they have complaints and instead of the love or the gratitude, they will tell you, oh, you know, I have this problem. Instead of talking about what they love, they may tell you what they don't like. That's okay. You keep on asking them why they don't like that life or if they tell you what they love and what they really admire in their life you will keep on asking them why do you love that you know why do you love this when you keep on asking them they will explain they will be deeply immersed in that value so uh, they will be emotional and then you will write down what they uh, really love in their life so you don't ask these questions, you know, one after the other. It must be number one, natural, number two, it, it should flow. And you may not, if it is online, you may not finish all the five questions and you don't need to finish all the five questions. You may focus on one or two for one prospect, one or two on, on another press prospect. But anyhow, you need to know in detail what they really want. Use this, remember, these are what? Magical questions. Why magic? It will help you to influence the prospect. It will help you to invite the prospect with a powerful appointment. And it, it will help you to influence the prospect to come for your business presentation. It will help you to have a powerful business presentation so that you, you, can, do, you can get a yes in, in your business presentation. So after the prospect replies for you these questions, then you can uh, also uh, tell them in detail about what you get. So for example, you can say, my attitude about life has completely transformed after I get the products of this company um, because I used to think life is like this and like that. I used to think uh, whatever I love or my values were this, but after I get uh, trainings from this company after I get products from this company my attitude has changed my system uh, my belief system has changed and now I think like this okay so these five magical questions by themselves they don't have any uh, influence or it can guide you something but after the, the five magical questions after you go why 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 keep on asking why and then you get the details then you should share yourself. That's why we said, my attitude about life has completely transformed after I got XYZ product this from this company or if XYZ opportunity from this company. Then I used to think XYZ, but after consuming the product, I started to think XYZ. I used to do XYZ, but after I take the product after I take the training or after I uh, got the opportunity from this company I started to do this and that so you know you are actually testifying the change that you have got from the company from the product from the marketing plan that you benefited in network marketing so these are the five uh, magical questions that we use in order to influence in this business. Now the other one in, in, in prospecting is you need to make sure that you do prospecting in one of the two ways that is more convenient to you. Some people they are outgoing 
extrovert. Some people are introvert. I am one of the introvert people. So you need to know which kind of personalities you have. So there are two types of prospecting types. The first one is cultural prospecting. If you are outgoing, if you are uh, extrovert, then you love communicating people. You are, it's easier to connect with other people. So you can use this cultural prospecting. Cultural prospecting is making prospecting a daily lifestyle. And uh, it's like eating, washing clothes, etc. So when you do that, it's a lifestyle that you do every day. That means you're happy to do it. But some people who are like me, who, who, uh, who are introvert, we don't really tend to communicate with people every day or we don't really enjoy communicating new people. So you need to do seasonal prospecting because as prospecting or recruitment is a must in your business, you need to do it professionally. So seasonal prospecting is a prospecting for a fixed period of time, intensively to get a reasonable number of leaders or a number of prospects so that after that you keep on chatting and communicating those people, the same type of people, uh, re frequently in order to recruit them to your products and, and marketing plan. So decide that one. For example, Eric Warrior says this one, 90 days game plan, 30 days um, how to recruit 30, I mean 20 people in 30 days. Uh, he has so many detailed uh, ways of uh, prospecting and invitation recruitment generally. So we and our team, we have used a lot of the 90 days game plan and it's one of the system that we follow in our business. Uh, I encourage you to watch Eric Quarry's 90 days game plan uh, video, which is very transformative in your business. You can apply exactly how he says it and prepare all the preparations. You have to have mental preparation and equipment preparation and you can you need to even uh, discuss with your family members and friends because during those prospecting periods, you are going to be in a camp, literally you're camping for success. So these are the different ways of prospecting. Now, handling telephone attitudes. Now, remember, whenever you call people, uh, it could be for presentation, it could be for invitation, it could be for prospecting, then you need to understand the attitude of people, your customers or your prospects. There is an 8 73 survey. This is a survey made by researchers. 8 slash 73 uh, survey. Number one, 44% of people, they give up on the first customer attitude. Network marketers, they give up on their first customer attitude. For example, these 44 people, what they do is they chat or they call or they communicate with people and they told them, oh, I don't like such opportunities or I don't like such things or I don't believe in, in talking to strangers, etc. So they, they switch off. They, the, the network marketer, they don't go further to that person again. They think that is a no. So that's number one, 44% of salespeople or network marketers, they give up on the first customer attitude. The second one is 22% of salespeople or network marketers, they give up on the second customer attitude. So the first attitude is, I don't want to talk to strangers. And then you go back and talk to them. And then they say, uh, no, I don't have time to listen to you. So these are 22%. After the second attitude, then they stop. Atti they think their at whatever they say is a rejection. Actually, it's not a rejection. The customer is showing you his or her attitude. Then 16% of salespeople and network marketers, they give up on the third customer attitude. 44% plus 22%, which is 66, plus 16%, which is uh, 70, uh, 82%. So uh, they give up, uh, 16%. They give up on the third attitude. Then 10% of the salespeople, they give up on the fourth customer attitude. Totally, this is 92%. So 92% of uh, network marketers, they give up on the first four customer attitude. I don't have time, um, I'm not ready, I don't understand, I don't want such things, or, you know, they give you lots of reasons. These are attitudes. Only 8% 
of the customers that you uh, go to, uh, uh, sorry, 8% of the network marketers and the salespeople, they go beyond the fourth attitude of the customer. So these 8%, they succeed a lot. So you need to be among the 8%. When somebody rejects you, then, or when somebody shows you attitude, go back and challenge that and then ask them. If somebody says, I don't have time to do any extra business, then you will tell them, it's okay, you don't need to, to have time. You just need to have some contacts and I will give you my time. So you addressed that problem. So they will say, oh, but I don't understand. It's okay, if you don't understand, I will just explain for you a 15 minutes business presentation in the coming one or two weeks and then you can do it. You know, you keep on addressing each attitude until you pass four of the attitude. You just make a tick, one attitude, done. The second attitude, done. People keep on asking you. Uh, you think that they are rejecting, but actually you are addressing their attitude. Then on, after the fourth, they will ask, uh, accept you. So 8%, eight slash 73 survey says 8% of the people or the network marketers, they go beyond the fourth attitude of the customer. Then what is 73? 73% 73 of all genuine customers, your future customers, they buy your products or allow you to meet them or to fix appointment after raising a minimum of four attitudes. Are you ready to be one of the best network marketers and salesperson? You need to pass all the four. They may tell you, I don't like network marketing. So you'll tell them, okay, it's okay. I understand you may not like network marketing. Then you go back and say, but you told me that you really would like to contribute a lot to your mom. So would you be willing to listen to what I have and contribute to your mom. You know, you keep on going back. Do not accept no as an answer. Remember, you are here in this business in order to influence others, in order to succeed in your business. When people show you their attitude, don't take it as a success. It is none of your business. If somebody rejects, that's none of your business. If somebody shows you their attitude, it's none of your business. What you want is a yes from them. So go back again and discuss with them, answer their questions and address their attitudes until you pass the fourth uh, attitude. Then after, that, remember 73% of all your genuine customers, they raise four attitudes before they allow you or before they say yes to come to your business presentation or to buy your product. So imagine what that, that means. If you quit like the 44% in the beginning, 22% in the second attitude, 16% on the third attitude, 10% on, on, the, on the fourth attitude, that means you end up being a mediocre presenter or mediocre network marketer. So you need to be extraordinary. To be extraordinary, you need to challenge or, uh, all these four attitudes. So you need to build a selling habit. Selling habit is what? Unless you have deliberately formed the habit of calling prospects uh, determined and passionate to make them see the reasons for buying your product, then unconsciously you have formed the habit of calling on prospects in a state of mind to accept the reasons uh, for not buying it. So you want those prospects who look for their uh, passions, their reasons to buy your products. If you don't intentionally look for people who need to see their passions, why they need to buy your product, then um, unconsciously, if you don't do this unconsciously, you will be looking for people who will be looking for their reasons why they shouldn't buy your products and services. So this is very important. Now there are two ways of prospecting. The first one is physical prospecting and the second one is online prospecting. So you need to do both these days. Physically, whenever you go to, to shopping and physically to the office or uh, uh, some meetings, etc., you need to always be alert in order to get connected with people, get their addresses and, 
and uh, add up to your name list. That is a very good way of prospecting. But the easiest way is also to do online. These days you can just sit at home and then fix a time fix time on social media, which social media will you go to, what kind of posts you will post. For example, now I can, uh, you, you can just go to ChatGPT and then ask on the ChatGPT, uh, give me 30 posts for the coming one month, uh, which is a curiosity post that can attract me so many likes and uh, so many uh, comments uh, on my business uh, or any topic that you want on uh, reading, on uh, if you are selling cosmetics on this and that cosmetics products, uh, whatever products you have, then the chat GPT will give you uh, curiosity post uh, contents. Then you can take that one and then design uh, it into a poster and then, then post every day. So you can post just today and then uh, schedule post for the coming one month. And every day you go back to your posters and whosoever is engaged, those people who like, then you send them personal message. Hi, thank you very much for liking uh, my post or, or our post. And if you are in, uh, interested, we can you know, discuss more about this product or we can discuss more about um, health industry or I don't know, personal development industry. What kind of industry are you involved in? So if they respond, you keep on communicating with them. If somebody comments on your post, then you can say, thank you very much for liking this comment. Are you interested in this industry or what do you do? You know, you keep on asking them and try to build. And once you build, you use the five magical questions and then trust me, you will be successful, successfully recruiting uh, so many people in this business. Now let's see the power of duplication. So, you know, what I love in network marketing is you're not alone to do this business. It's not just you. You can use this, um, the power of your, your personal effort and uh, then you will also leverage your effort through your team. So if you uh, prospect two people per day, let's say, if you prospect two people per day, this is a very minimum number and everybody can do it. Two people per day. In one month, you would have prospected 60 people. Then in six months, you would have prospected 360 people. And in one year, you would have prospected more than 720 people. Then if 10% of your prospects join you, then you will have 72 people joining you direct only by your effort. This is your personal effort. In one year, 72 people join in your customer group. In the second year, if you teach these 72 people to do exactly what you have done, it will be 5,184. You know, we can't say that all the 72 people do exactly like you. Some will do less, some will do more. So you can teach them and average, let's say, they have done like you. Someone uh, uh, just buy the product and they didn't do it. And some of them they do, instead of two, they do five, six, ten uh, prospecting per day and they did more. So if average, they do exactly like you, 72 people times 72 new people, that will be more than 5,000 uh, people in the second year. Then the third year, this 5,184 people, they uh, do average 72 recruitments per year, that will be more than 373,000 people in your consumer group just in three years. So. Now, if you see this number and uh, you keep on doing this business in the coming three years, that means you can have more than 3,700 people in your business. That means you will be one of the top uh, networkers in your business. That is possible. The possibility is there available. But what it takes is your effort, your commitment, your consistency in this business in the coming uh, three years. If you don't have, if you do, if you don't achieve this in the coming three years, and let's say that you had achieved only ten percent, ten percent of this that will be more than thirty-seven thousand people will be in your business. What does that mean? You can multiply that with the average product sales for one customer, and then you can calculate that in your company's marketing plan. You will be making pretty good money. So it is possible to retire. It is possible to make good income. 
it is possible to help so many people to change their life. You know, one of the best things in network marketing is you don't grow alone. You help others to grow. The more people you help, then the better you grow. So uh, this is an amazing industry. Uh, that's all that we have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to drop on the comments and you can ask it. And uh, next time we will come up with the, answer, with the answers. And those of you who uh, would apply the principles we have told you here uh, to do your business, whenever you get results, uh, feel free to contact uh, Letube and we will be happy to um, host you here in our program. Uh, online or physical so that uh, you will be teaching other people from your own testimonies. Thank you very much and I'm very much happy that uh, you guys are working in network marketing industry because it, it is literally changing the continent and the world uh, for a better uh, life. Thank you very much. Enjoy. See